The legendary poet Robert Frost once said, I am not a teacher, but an awakener. In his quote, Frost is emphasizing that teachers have the power to invigorate an energy inside the student that had previously been dormant. Inside of every person, every student, every individual, there's a spark that just needs ignition to be lighted. Teaching is not and cannot be formulaic. It's a delicate bridge of human affinity between the student and the master. There are nuances within the art of teaching that not just any person can handle or distribute. A teacher is a jewel in a world desperate for education. I came to this conclusion having grown up in a family of teachers. We're strewn all over my home are whiteboards, pencils, and books. My mother has been teaching for as long as I can remember. She lectures at the University of Indonesia and also teaches students. But it all started from her father. Back in the 1960s, when my grandfather was a high school student, he was brilliant at numbers and still is. He was an exemplary model student, so much so that on the day of his graduation, he was offered a job as a high school teacher. Needless to say, he was elated. I mean, wouldn't you be too? First day, fresh off senior year, you get the opportunity to literally teach your underclassmen. On that day, he skipped home with glee, beyond accelerated to inform his parents about the offer he had just received. At the dinner table, he said, Ma, Pa, I have something to tell you. And he couldn't keep the smile off his face as he continued, I've been offered a job as a high school teacher. But my great-grandparents stayed silent. Heads bowed, eyes fixated on the meal in front of them, not uttering a single word. After an uncomfortable silence, my great-grandfather said, we didn't send you to school just to go back to school. We sent you to school so that you could become a capable businessman to provide for our family. You see, my grandfather was the eldest of eight children. And in Chinese culture, customarily, the eldest son will provide for his younger siblings. My grandfather's family was not exactly swimming in money. They struggled to put food on the table, much less send all eight of them to school. My grandfather was crushed. He never ended up becoming a teacher. We must keep in mind that this was back in the 1960s. My grandfather did not exactly attend an institution like JIS. He went to a local school in Bandung, a city two hours away from Jakarta by car. Teaching at an institution like that did not exactly fit the idea of prestige. Nevertheless, my grandfather saw past the low salaries and saw teaching as an opportunity to enrich, to awaken the lives of the youth. With this missing puzzle piece lost inside of him, what followed of his daughter's ambitions reflected the future he yearned for. Fast forward to 30 years later, my mother is completing her master's degree at Cornell University. Now it is my mother who is at the dinner table with her parents. But she has her head bowed, eyes fixated on the meal in front of her. Almost mumbling, she said, Ma, Pa, I have something to tell you. Knowing what had followed after her own father had confessed her, his wishes to his own parents, she was afraid she would meet the same fate. She continued saying, I want to pursue a PhD. I want to become a professor. I want to teach. Immediately, my grandfather lifted his gaze and met my mother's. Sitting in front of him was no longer his daughter, but his 18-year-old self. It was as if he had been teleported 30 years prior. He granted my mother's wish wholeheartedly. 
it had gone full circle. Back in 1960, my grandfather had a dream to teach. And 30 years later in 1990, my mother had the same dream. Nevertheless, only one of them was able to fulfill it. Through pursuing a career in education, my mother allowed my grandfather's long lost dream to finally come true. Despite generational differences across numerous decades, a bridge had been generated from one man's dream to teach to his daughter. Truly, the everlasting power of teaching had not once ceased to exist. What was once seen as a job without merit had surely risen to one of the most impactful and powerful jobs of our modern society. My grandfather still saw this, and he was so proud to have his daughter continue the legacy he never got a chance to carry out. Although I might not follow in my mother's footsteps and pursue a career as a teacher, what I've learned from my family's teaching background is a well-wrought appreciation of the power of awakening that teachers can enact on their students. So through this power, I believe that as important it is for us to have passionate teachers, this is to no avail without the inquisitive learner. And I believe that the inquisitive learner can only be born from a teacher who can awaken the spirit inside of them. So I have a description for the room. This is one teacher who your positive will never divulge your secrets. This one teacher you go to whenever you have any problems. This teacher is your rock and your source of wisdom. This teacher is the person you name when somebody asks you. Who is the teacher you can confidently say changed your life? I'll share first. This teacher for me was my piano teacher when I was around eight years old. I'll give her the substitute name of Bulara. Bulara was with me from the very beginning when I first learned my C major scale to my first nursery rhymes all the way to my first sonatina. We had a nurturing affinity between us that never ceased to grow. Bulara made me feel like a prodigy. With her, I felt like I could become the next Chopin. Then one day, all of a sudden, I got reassigned to a different teacher. Bulara did not even bid farewell before she left. Suddenly, I had this new teacher who I would name Buendi. So it goes without saying that this was probably the first time I had ever experienced heartbreak. Buendi was the eight-year-old's idea of the worst teacher in existence. And I don't mean that she hit my hands with rulers or was really strict. She was the opposite. She couldn't care less about me. Whenever I played the piano in front of her, it was as if I was playing to a wall. I received no feedback, no help, no advice, just silence. I started to wonder, was Bulara just being really nice to me? Was I not all that special? Then one day, Buendi confirmed it. She told me I was not prepared to move on to the next grade. This was the final straw. I still remember how my nose got sour that day. I looked her straight in the eyes as I said, I am ready. Having grown up in a family of teachers, I knew what a good teacher was like. A good teacher would not have talked my spirits. A good teacher would have lifted them. A good teacher would have encouraged me to do better. Where was the bond that I had with Bulora that taught me that this lackluster bond was not adequate for me? Where was the bond that I saw between my mother and her students that made her excited to teach and her students excited to learn? Nell Noddings, a Stanford Emeritus professor, has written about the importance of care, saying that if our students feel that we care for them, this can be a strong motivation for learning. In my most treacherous time of self-doubt, then, I reached out to Bulora once more using my mother's Blackberry phone. She felt a strong sense of empathy towards me and invited me over to her house for one-on-one -on -one tutoring sessions. Her house was situated on a narrow road 
where village children ran to and fro. The room in which she kept her piano had makeshift cardboard plastered all over the walls in order to soundproof the vicinity of the room as much as possible. This was where I spent the next month training for my exam. On the last lesson before the test, I still remember my mother handing me a white envelope to pass on to Bulara as a token of thanks. Naively, not having a clue what was inside the envelope, I just handed it to Bulara. She was taken aback, as if she'd never seen an envelope in her life. She let out a hearty laugh, and she said, Futri, please bring this back home to your mom and tell her I said thanks, too. I am beyond thankful to have grown up with my grandfather and my mother, without whom I would not have been able to realize the sheer generosity that Bulara lent me during our Saturday lessons, without whom I would not have realized when I see the lethargic looks on my mother's face every time she comes home from a lecture or she just finishes a lesson, I would not have realized that there is a reason why she spends hours upon hours preparing for lectures and more hours speaking to students, striking bonds. I know there's a reason far beyond the number of figures in one's paycheck or the esteem a job holds. I see this in Bulara when she teaches me, although she's not indebted to me in any way. As a member of the third generation succeeding a lineage of such zealous individuals, the bridge has finally found its way to me. I can only hope that with what I impart, this bridge continues to extend further down the line to show the world what teaching has to offer, to show the world the sense of empowerment that teaching can instill in both the student and the teacher. Thank you very much.